Mm. Well, I mean, I've just I've just gotten started with this book, but you made some interesting points regarding uh, the perception of judo in America. And he did not know. uh, For example, he thought he could show these techniques and that would then uh, people would have some sort of understanding of what's going on. But it didn't really turn out that way. Um, uh, Also, that uh, the way uh, uh, the Americans portrayed what happened at that very at that uh, demonstration at West Point also uh, were not exactly in line with what Maida says happens. For mm-hmm. example, uh, as I mentioned before, the uh, uh, the other guy, Tomita, he uh, broke that guy, b- broke that guy down, basically, right? And he fought another couple other people. But the next day in the newspaper, they said that uh, first there was an illustration of Tomita as an old man with a walking stick. <laughs> and but he was they, 40, so that it is not old. <laughs> right. And they said that... Uh, at, at, at the end, an ambulance had to be called, and implying that it was Tomita that had to be taken away in an ambulance, when in fact it was the other guy. So they kind of like, you know. Played, on, played it on words. Yeah, yeah. So they didn't. And so this kind of repeats throughout the, uh, the sections I've read so far, where what happened, they don't, the newspapers don't actually portray uh, how Maeda and uh, Tomita saw things. So that's quite interesting. And he also, uh, you mentioned sort of things like gi and no gi. Um, Maeda had to, he's already, I'm only a few pages. Uh, I should say this book is divided according to country. So it starts off in the first chapter is America. And after America, he apparently goes to the UK. So in America, he's already, um, while he's trying to prove what judo is, he has to kind of engage in matches that aren't exactly judo. It's he's it's an American style wrestler, and uh, the guy's like I'm gonna I'm not gonna wear uh, yeah. a jacket a jacket or anything. So and you have and there's no striking and only like throws and locks. And from my from my perspective, he's like you know how am I supposed and and the guy is a head taller than in him, mm-hmm. so he's kind of like under pressure. How am I gonna beat this guy using judo? Uh, when you know he doesn't have a gi top on and stuff like that, so he he was entering bouts where he was not uh, he wasn't really uh, uh, wasn't really the best situation for him to demonstrate his abilities. Mm. So and that seems to continue throughout the book where there's situations like that that arise. But did you and get also, to the UK chapter? No, not yet, not yet. Because that's really that's really important. So this book is uh, it's long. It's uh, it's 800 pages, and he it starts off in it's like America, and then the UK, and then Belgium and Spain, and mm. uh, he doesn't really get to uh, Brazil until later on. So it's oh, it's quite okay. it's it's quite a long uh, long time before we get into the aspects you were discussing with regards to him in South Cuba. He goes to Cuba first, and then. And then finally to South America. Yeah. So um, I'm interested to see how that plays out. But I, I yeah, I, I can't say how uh, mm. uh, what's going to what's going to appear. That's Let me so see. There were 800 mm. pages. Can you imagine how much things have happened? Right. And it's like you say, we, we talked about how Japanese is difficult and. Uh, yeah. It's, you know, the book is written in a very, in a very, in a pre-war script, so it can be quite, it, yeah. it can be quite difficult. Um, where is that? Uh, right now I'm learning the kanji and I'm like, why is there a million pronunciation to this whole kanji? Well, it ha- this, this one has even, this has strange stuff like uh, the, uh, the names of cities are in kanji. This is probably kind of technical, but uh, like yeah. Washington, D.C. It said, Wash- there was a kanji, and they're like, and then they went to this place. And I'm like, what is this? And it's Washington, D.C., but it's all in kanji. Like, Why I've not never Katakana? Seen- <laughs> yeah, I had, and I was looking at it like, what is this? Washington, a Washington. Oh, Washington, D.C. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> but, I, you know, just the name of the city, I had to yeah. read two or three times. You know, it's not even like, it's I haven't even read the whole sentence yet. I'm just stopping. What is it? What is this word here? What is it? This is this a place? Yeah. And then, you know, finally, oh, this is Washington. Oh, 
Oh, he went to Washington, D.C. Okay, there you go. So mm-hmm. an example of how difficult it is to read. It took me like two minutes to figure out what city they were going to. And it's a very common city, but it was written in a very unusual way. So, mm. yeah. Oh. So um, now that we got some interesting stories on Maeda. Um, the, uh, sorry, you, one more yeah. thing. Yeah. He also, um, interestingly, th- this kind of uh, global events also play a small part in this story because uh, Russia, Japan was at war with Russia at this time. Mm. And in 1904, the, uh, um, the Japanese fleet retook uh, a place called Port Arthur in China f- back from Russia. They had given it up in like, like 1895 and then they retook it. The Navy retook it. And so that really it was a huge embarrassment to Russia and also really shocked the Western world, because it was like the first time uh, a Western nation had been uh, defeated by a uh, an Asian nation, you know, small one, too. Right. So it was a big shock. So when Maida, there's a story, an anecdote in here where Maida's like and uh, Tomita are walking down the streets of New York and kids are running out and going, oh, Japanese banzai <laughs> and like hanging on their arms like they're heroes and stuff like that. So and they're like, well, how did Japan, you know, beat Russia's Navy? And a lot of them are like, well, it's because of judo. They all know judo. So that's like uh, the essence of the Japanese samurai. And so that's what's given them their power. And uh, a lot of Americans uh, realize that the topic of Japan and judo was popular. So they began publishing books about judo at that Mm. time. So that's yeah. why you have like the Hancock books of like 1904, 1905. And, uh, yeah. and so Maeda, Maeda actually goes and he's like, he sees an ad in the paper for this book, you know, The Secrets of Judo or something like that. It doesn't really say what the title is. It just says a book about judo, Japanese judo or how to master Japanese judo. And he looks up the guy and he goes to his, he goes to his office and he knocks on the door and says, listen, uh, so... Um, he's like, so, uh, what kind of experience with judo or jujitsu do you have? He's like, me, I don't do any of that stuff where you roll around and get all sweaty. Never, never done it in my life. Might as like, you know, just like completely like flumped, like floored, like you don't have any yeah. idea what judo is. And you published a book about judo. And he's like, look, I had a buddy who, uh, studied y- Yoshin, Yoshin Ryu. Yeah. It's very and, popular. It's very popular. Yeah. And so he, uh, I had him uh, stand in some of the poses that they use in Yoshin Ryu, and I wrote uh, just a brief description on the bottom and published it. And so, and Maeda was like, at first he was like, kind of went through this wave of shock, anger, indignation, but then he, then he had like a revelation. He's like, this is how they do it in America. Americans like to, uh, they like, what did they say? He said they like to eat unusual things. They like to eat unusual things, as in like, you know, they're uh, they're taken by new things. So uh, this is, he's like, uh, he's like, though, Jap- though, this is how this is not how I would ever present Japanese uh, Budo. Uh, that's how it's done in America. And I have to understand that or I'm not going to succeed, which I was like, hey, that's this guy's he's a thinking man. eh? <sighs> wow. Like, like, for example, this story, you see how easily nonsense can get around? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And so the guy had no shame. He was like, yeah, I did. I, he flat out told the guy he's never done judo in his life. And uh, just sort of smirked at, smirked at uh, the young fella, you know, Maeda, that was coming up to, like, confront him. So there's little, there's little incidents like that sprinkled throughout this. Along with the stuff about the newspapers not exactly reporting the um, the bouts accurately. Listen, don't get me wrong. There's a lot mm. of these narratives that mm. I years ago I believed because you know, it was you know the popular thing to to say or what people were talking about. But you know, as you start to research, as you start to read for yourself, uh, you start to find out some things. Do you make mistakes? Of course, it's yeah, it's a normal part of the learning process, but you know, it's uh, what's important is to actually go back on them because 
you know, this is a history we're talking about, like the hardest topic on the planet. There is, um, you know, falsified evidence. There is conflicting evidence. There is human bias. There is just so much that goes into it. Politics, sociology. And I'm not talking about just martial arts, everything. So it's also very important to go back on that. For example, I made a few claims back uh, years ago. And then when you introduced me to the um, Tetsushin Ryu book with the mm-hmm. Mata Harai and, uh, and the Dojime, and I, I did a video on it. Like I showed them like in, in, back in the Jujutsu days, yeah, they yeah. Would that was great. even take off, take off their shirt. And they, they weren't only fighting with jackets and uh, only Sarumata. And, and I said like, you know, back, you know, I said this, 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 uh, I go back on it. I, I apologize. You know, it, it's very, also very important because making mistakes is just inevitable, especially in a field like this, because it's just so difficult. Nobody has the time to just immerse uh, in this type of research, unless it's your career, because, you know, I started, you know, enjoying this, uh, having fun. And now it's, it's it's my job, basically, because so <laughs> just to see how how difficult this thing is, you know, also learning Japanese because you want access to even more data because it's very easy to you know see a few evidence here and there and it's like ah it's very easy to get to this conclusion this is what happened or this is uh, what it's for or whatever it may be but then you're missing a key element and then it goes in and it changes everything so you have to go back and then it's like oh i was wrong so it's 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 not an easy thing to do and it takes a lot of maturity to to keep learning and keep an open mind and also uh, uh it's you know it, it needs a, a lot of humbleness like to say hey i was wrong um and also you know another thing is that you know some people are gonna are gonna be like oh you were wrong about this you, you know you're you're dishonest or you're like, people are gonna say all kinds of things you know i i'd say don't don't you know cave into this type of claims because it's just gonna mess with your head so just pay no attention keep keep on working keep on studying that that's all i can say mm.